Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to show you the five mistakes I see most photographers do when they use Lightroom. Let's do it. All right, mesdames et messieurs. So being able to avoid these five mistakes can really help you as a photographer to get more exposure on social media, to get more exposure in the press, to be able to sell your prints. It is vital that you stay until the end of this video because I can tell you something. I receive about 10 to 20 people per day writing me to review the photos. In fact, I even have a private Facebook group that every Wednesday people send me their raw files as they show me how they retouched it and then I do my own version of it. For example, this photo was sent by one of my students and by the way, if you want to know more about this private Facebook group, I have a whole lecture and webinar that talks about it. The link is below the video. But anyway, that's the raw file that uh, my friend sent me that's the photo, how you retouch it. I really like what he did, and that's how I did it. On the left side, you see that's how he retouched it. On the right side, that's how I did it. It's very subtle, but it's got more dodge and burn. It's got more colors. Anyways, because every Wednesday I have people sending me their photos, I don't want to show other people's bad photo, but I want to show you the five mistakes I see over and over and over for the last 10 to 15 years, I want to say. So mistake number one, too much clarity, contrast or texture is just too much and especially when you have clouds uh, everything can, is kind of very sharp like look at the grass it's super sharp uh, the uh, there's a lot of contrast in the clouds it's a great photo but it's too contrasty it's got too much sharpening and it's got too much clarity uh, let me show you how i would retouch this photo so i'm going to go to the develop module and you can see and that's what a lot of people do if i look at the raw file i can see that Texture is 100%. I'm gonna back this down all the way. Clarity, I'm gonna back this down. Actually, I even go minus clarity sometimes, like minus four or minus five clarity. And uh, I don't need so much vibrance on this photo. Look how much more pleasing it is. You know, there is no halo in, in the sky. There's no contrast. It looks a lot more natural. The problem is that if you do a photo and you add too much clarity, it's just going to scream, this was retouched, I'm good at using Lightroom, and I've over-processed the photo. And you will get rejection by the press, and you will get rejections by galleries, or by, you know, even on social media. Social media usually is a little more uh, nice, I would say, but I work a lot with professionals, I work a lot with the press, and if I send a photo with got too much clarity, they'll just reject it. Why? Because the first response to somebody seeing a photo like this is, oh, you retouched it, right? I don't want people to respond like this to me, photo. I want people to say, wow, what a beautiful, you know, Tuscany scene. That's what I want people to say. So let me show you another example of too much clarity. This is another photo that I on purpose added too much clarity. This was also shot in Tuscany. I see that all the time. Look at the clouds, how the clouds has got a lot of contrast, there's a lot of darkness. The clouds are very like, you know, very defined. And you don't want to have, clouds are supposed to be puffy. They're supposed to be a little bit blurry, you know? Also, you want to be able to play between blurry and sharp and not have everything sharp. So uh, what I would do on this photo is, of course, I would get texture down. Clarity, which is plus 28, I would make it down uh, like minus, not like maybe minus like 10 or something. And, um, what you can do is you can add clarity on the building. So I would take a brush and I would go to clarity, add clarity. I would make sure my brush is around 80 and I would paint clarity just on the buildings, not on the water. You don't want to put clarity on water or clouds. Biggest mistake that I see. It's probably the number one mistake that I see. And now you got perfect clouds, you know, it's kind of silky water and very sharp buildings, much nicer. So that's the number one mistake that I see. By the way, guys, like this video, it really makes a difference. Don't forget to slam that like button. Don't forget to leave me a comment. I read and answer every single comment. I wanna hear from you from what you wanna learn. I make two videos per week. The number two mistake that I see the most is two obvious dodge and burn. You see this photo, for example, uh, has got a lot of dodge and burn and uh, when you can see the stroke too much, it, it just kills it, you know? So let me go into the brush and let me show you, uh, you know, the different, I'm gonna erase that brush stroke and that brush stroke. And the two key things to avoid that your brush stroke, when you want to make something brighter by dodging, is you go to exposure, 
So you make sure that exposures are on one and you make sure that flow in density is like max in the 80s. And now I can brush over her. I can, the sun was really up there. I can pretend that the sun was coming there and it's, you know, it maybe make a little stripe like this. And even that is too much. So what I usually do is I go from 0.97 to 0.5. It's kind of subtle. Let me show you the before and after. You want to have somebody say, oh, you dodged and burned the photo. So that's the before and that's the after. Let me show you another photo. All right, so here is another example of a photo of Venice. I mean, you can see, and I see that so much, you know, in the photo I get, you can see the dodging there that's so obvious and so obvious there. I have a rule, which is when you do your dodge and burning, you look at the photos the next day, and if you see your brush strokes, you know you've gone too far. So let me show you how we can correct that. I'm gonna take the brush here. I'm gonna select the brush here, and I'm just gonna press delete, and I'm gonna redo it, but this time, you know, remember 0.97 or one of exposure and uh, flow in density in, in the 80s. And now I can sort of dodge this and make this a little bit brighter. And, you know, I, I think the water needs to be a little bit brighter. And, and don't get me wrong, I love Dungeon Burn. I can make even this a little bit brighter. I love it, but it's gonna be subtle. If it's too obvious, it's not good. So you can see before, after. When you do the before and after, you go, oh my gosh, it's a big change. And also one thing you can do is, you see, for example, I think this is too strong here. So I can hold on the option key and erase the brush stroke that I did here. And I can click new. And now I'm doing a new brush. And this time, instead of putting 0 0.97, I'm gonna put much lower. So maybe like 0 0.21. And every brush strokes can have their own value. And you go and you build it little by little by little by little. Mystic number three, colors from another planet. What I mean by that is, and this is something that changed my life. Uh, years ago, I heard about this amazing photographer called Peter Link, who apparently sold hundreds of millions of dollars of fun art print. And I went to visit many of his galleries and his photos were super saturated, but very nice. And people that was in the room uh, were all saying, oh, what a nice photo, what a nice sunset, what a nice beach, what a nice mountain. And they were not reacting like, oh, it's Photoshopped when it was obviously Photoshop. And I realized the reason why that is, is because Peter Link basically does a lot of saturation, does great retouching, but respects the you, meaning when he does a sunset, it's gonna be really red, but it's not gonna be like some kind of red that you only find on Mars. For example, this photo, this is something I get a lot. And I've been guilty of this because I used to be called Mr. Magenta, and I used to have like these crazy magenta photos, like, not like this, this is way too much, but you get the idea, you want something that's gonna match the experience that we have on planet Earth. It's not about the saturation, it's about the, you, the kind of color you're using. So for example, a good way to prevent this is to use some of the fixed white balance. For example, I like to go on daylight. Daylight is a very common white balance, very experienced on Earth, you see, it took out all the red out. Um, I, I also have like a brush stroke in there that's got a weird color uh, that I'm gonna erase. And um, I mean, I understand, you know, sometimes you want to add some warmth on the photo, but I used to do it a lot in the past, but I find that if you add warmth to a photo where there was no warmth, even hidden in a raw file, it just looks fake. So you're better off, you're better off just, you know, having a nice contrast. You can add a bit of magenta, you know, to make it pop a bit, but you're better off staying in the original color of how it was and trying to add color that was not there because it's really hard to do it in a way that doesn't look fake. I can still make this a little bit brighter and you know, I don't wanna to spend too much time on, on this one, but that's the idea. The, the best thing is, you know, you know, for example, on this one, I would probably take a brush and maybe add a bit of yellow magenta just on a tree, for example, just to make them pop, make them a little warmer, maybe add a bit of light on the tree but I would not touch the sky. The sky was blue and there was no warmth into it. That's it, but now I have contrast between the colors of the trees and the sky. Uh, let me show you the before and after. Before and after. Yeah, it's even a little too bright. And uh, you know, I probably would uh, do a little bit of a gradient here on the sky to make it even darker. So um, I can double click here on effect to put everything down to zero and just add, uh, you know, 
and really get that blue. But you don't, again, you don't want to go too much because if the blue becomes too saturated, what's going to happen is that it's going to look like a fake blue. So what you can do is you can, as you make it darker, you can take out some of the uh, exposure, uh, sorry, some of the saturation so it looks more realistic. Okay, very cool. Mix tech number four, not using the proper crop or not fixing the horizon. This is a good example. That's a photo I shot in New York and I on purpose made the horizon a little bit like this. This is something also I've been guilty of. Often I post photo where people say your horizon is not exactly straight. So I'll show you two tricks. The first trick is you take the crop tool, you've got this amazing angle thing and you can click, it's the angle tool and you can make it follow the horizon and it's gonna make your horizon perfectly straight. But that's trick number one. The other trick is use standard cropping. Most of the gallery that I work with or the newspaper magazine I work with, they either, either want four by three or 16 by nine format. So I like on this one to use a 16 by nine format, which I think is really cool. So now I made the horizon straight and use a 16 by nine format. That's actually the format I work the most with my galleries. And I find it's good because usually it enables you to zoom in a bit more. It gives like a more panoramic kind of view. The other crop I, I want to advise you to, to use is the four by five. Four by five is Instagram. Instagram has become such a huge platform today. And if you post with a four by five in portrait mode, your exposure on Instagram will be a lot better. So I choose four by five and if you press X on the keyboard, you see you get into portrait mode and now you can position how you want it, find some kind of cool framing and post that. So try using more 16 by nine framing and making your horizon very straight. Last mistake, but not the least, is too much saturation. And again, I'm 100% guilty of this. You see, I find that over the last 15 years I've been doing photography, every time I learned kind of a new trick, like a new plugin, like Luminar Photomatics, Aurora, or you know, some kind of slider somewhere, I usually overuse it all the time. And often it looks an over-processed and over-saturated photo. Like this photo is really cool, but it's too saturated. Uh, there's no way the colors could be that much saturated in life. So I like very saturated colors, don't get me wrong. But as I grow as a photographer, I try to create the maximum impact with um, the reasonable, the maximum possible saturation that people can experience easily. So on this one, I think it's a little too much. I on purpose boost it. So I would put the vibrant zone at zero and you know, maybe just add a little bit, but not that much. If you just go, you know, something like this, you like, like this kind of blue I see often on photos, it just is too much. So you have to go at the threshold of what people can experience. Now the truth is, if you go on an amazing sunset and you see how red it is, trying to retouch that in Lightroom, it's gonna be really red. So, you know, some photos are truly in nature very saturated. You just have to make it to the point where it still looks realistic. For me, at plus 10, that's good enough. It's still saturated, but not too much. All right, I hope you learned a thing or two. Check out my webinar. It's my entire life story. I'm also gonna give you some free preset, and I'm gonna to talk to you about this private Facebook group if you want me to retouch your photography. Check it out, the link is below the video.